of course, if we can find the derivatives of hyperbolic functions, that means we can also find the integrals of hyperbolic functions. And as with the derivatives, we're not really, I'm not really expecting you to memorize these. I'm expecting you to be able to apply these to particular problems because the, the formulas themselves are on a quick reference sheet here. All right, so let's use them to find the integral of cinch squared of x dx. Now, cinch squared is setting off a little bell in my head. So I don't actually have that one as one of my integrals. I mean, if you look up, I have cosec squared and sec squared, but I don't have an integral for cinch squared. But I do remember that there was an identity that involved cinch squared. So let me go back a page or two to the identities. Now, cinch squared is involved in a couple of them, but if I use this particular one right here, it wouldn't do me any good because then I get cosh squared and I don't have an integral for that. But I do notice that cinch squared is equal to cosh of 2x minus 1 over 2. Ah, so that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to say that this is equal to, from my identity, it's actually a half angle identity, if you want to know. Um, it would be the integral of cosh of 2x minus 1 over 2. Now I know what you're thinking, how is that a half angle? Uh, um, it's not because of the 2x, it's because of the x. So 2x divided by 2 would get you x. You had half of this angle to begin with. This is kind of the way I was thinking about it. Okay, so u substitution, right? This is 1 half integral of cosh of 2x minus 1 dx. And this is a very basic u substitution. u is right there. u is nested inside. So I'm just going to put it over here. u is 2x. du is the derivative of that. And you always want to show this somewhere. Actually, I take that back. For ones that are as basic as this, you kind of don't even have to. I mean, we're getting to the point where super easy ones like this, we kind of know how this is going to work. At least we, I hope we do. So we have a half already there, and you gain another half from the fact that you have to compensate for the 2x in there. So it's a half times another half. Integral of um, cosh of u minus 1 du. All right, so then I can integrate that with respect to u. So this would be one fourth, the integral of, oh, that's a cosh, my goodness. Integral of cosh is cinch. So this is cinch u minus, the integral of one is u plus c. And then I would just go back and put in what my original function was. So this is cinch of two x minus two x and it's a fourth times the whole thing, plus c. This is fine. If you want to distribute the one fourth, that's fine too. So it would be one fourth cinch of two x minus x over two. Either one of those is fine. Okay, so now let's kick it up a notch and let's do a definite integral. Something that's gonna involve a little bit more work, shall we? Okay, so, and actually the, the actual integral here is not going to be that difficult. It's the work to make the integral function that we're going to need. Okay, so I noticed right away that the derivative of cinch is cosh. You see how you've got a function nested inside another? Let me, let me put it this way. This is zero to the natural log of three. That's cinch of x cubed cosh x dx. We don't write it this way because we're lazy but that's what it is. So little bells are going off in my head. That's u. u is equal to the cinch of x. du is the derivative of cinch, which is cosh. Oop, sorry, I was about to put two h's on that. Cosh of x, there we go, dx, which is exactly what I want. So far, life is grand. So I'm going to be integrating, wait for it, u cubed du. I mean, could this get any easier? Okay, so now we have to make a choice. I mean, when we integrate this, we know it's going to be 1 fourth u to the fourth plus c. Oh, not plus c because we're doing a definite interval. Sorry. So 1 fourth u to the fourth 
And we have to make a choice of whether we're going to back into the values for you here or if we're going to do it up here, right? So in other words, are we going to do one fourth and then put back in what you was cinched to the fourth, or are we going to go figure out the new values? And I would argue we should go figure out the new values. Almost always it's easier to do a definite integral substitution with changing your limits. So notice I didn't put numbers in here because you can't, <laughs> so you got to wait. So let's start with X is zero. When X is zero, U is the cinch of zero, which is e to the zero minus e to the negative zero over two. That's just the definition, right? That's all that's. Oh, and I'm just doing this all on the side. This is the actual problem here. Okay, well, e to the u is, or excuse me, e to the zero is one. e to the negative zero, negative zero is zero. Zero doesn't have a sign, so that's one. So it's one minus one over two, which is zero over two, which is zero. So that means my bottom number is still zero. Hooray, <laughs> so that's easy. Ah, the top number. All right, the top number is not going to be so easy. Okay, so let's do that. So when X was the natural log of three, U is the cinch of the natural log of three. Okay, now think about the definition. <laughs> this is going to be, um, tricky. So this is e to the natural log of 3 minus e to the negative natural log of 3 all over 2. All right, e to the natural log of 3 is simple. That's 3, right? Because e and natural log are inverses of each other. What you have to remember about the negative here is that it's really natural log of 3. Here, let me read it again. e to the natural log of 3 minus e to the natural log of 3 to the negative 1 power. Right, because that negative kind of pops up there. So this is three and this is a third. This is three to the negative one, which is three take away a third. Um, all right, so um, we can do this. I mean, this is this is simple math at this point, so it's, it's kind of up to you how you want to do this. So three take away a third is nine thirds take away three thirds, which is eight thirds. Eight thirds divided by two is the same thing as eight thirds times one half, which is eight sixths, which is four thirds. That's one way to do it. There, there's several ways. You could also divide each of these by half. So three halves minus one sixth, that would work, whatever. Okay, so there's my other value. So now I'm gonna go put that value here. You were gonna have to do that work anyway. It doesn't, it doesn't change the fact that you're gonna have to do it. But I like doing it over here on the side rather than trying to do it here as part of the integral. Because that's what would happen if you back substitute, if you go back to the x value. One way or another, you were gonna have to find the cinch of natural log of three. It was just gonna happen. So I think it's easier to figure it out over here and then just put the four thirds in the problem because that's way simpler. All right, so this is one fourth out in front. No problem there. Four thirds to the fourth minus zero to the fourth. I mean, the zero to the fourth, I really don't have to put. We all know that's zero, but just in case it makes you happy. There you go. Which is equal to... Let's see, we've got four to the fourth over four times three to the fourth, which is four to the third over three to the fourth, which is 64 over 81. And of course, as always, I can go check myself with Desmos if I so desire. There's nothing stopping me. I'll just, I'll just tag it onto this um, other function here. So zero to the natural log of three. Luckily for us, um, Desmos actually knows the um, trigonometric, or the hyperbolic, sorry, not trigonometric, the hyperbolic functions. And I think it gives us grief if we try to do cinch cubed, but I'm gonna try it. Times um, cosh of x. There it is, cosh of x dx. Yeah, see, I think it doesn't like it this way. I think it can handle squareds, but it doesn't like cubes. So, but if I put the cube this way, then it can handle it. I can double check whether or not that's equal to my actual value. Just trying to make sure I type that in right. So 64 divided by 81. Ta-da! They are one and the same, believe it or not. 
So I was correct in what I did, which is always nice. So I can make a little note 